in this video we're going to do Green's Theorem backwards using a line integral to find area. And I really should put quotes around backwards here because when we have something that's equals there is no backwards, both sides are the same. But the idea is that we usually use Green's Theorem to take a line integral, maybe a circulation or work integral, and convert that to a double integral. So we usually use Green's Theorem this way, but what we're going to do in this example is just using Green's Theorem to convert a double integral back to a line integral. So it's just kind of a neat application of Green's Theorem. All right, so we're going to start with the basic idea that we talked about a long time ago, that the area of a region can be found by double integrating over the region of just dA. So you're adding up all those little areas in your partition of the region. Or you can rewrite that as 1 dA. All right, so the idea with Green's Theorem is, though, that the double integrals in Green's Theorem involve something about a vector field. So we basically need to dissect this to sort of create a vector field that would give us this 1. So the first thing I've done here is split the 1 up into 1 half plus 1 half. And then I'm going to use either form of Green's Theorem. We could use either one, but I'm going to choose to use flux divergence form of Green's Theorem. So that's just a little bit easier. The integral on the right-hand side is divergence is a slightly easier calculation than curl. All right, so the idea is that I want to write that divergence so that I can match it up with my area integral. So I've split this up so that I can pair up my del m dx with my one half and then my del n dy with my other one half. The idea now is that I want to use that to create this vector field f that would have been part of Green's theorem. So I'm going to undo those partial derivatives to recover my m and n. I'm going to integrate del m del x with respect to x and del n del y with respect to y. So I'll get m equals one half x and n equals one half y. All right, so there is my vector field that I have created kind of out of thin air from my original integral that was just the integral of one dA. And so now my task is to basically turn that into a line integral. I've got the line integral with my vector field. We chose to use the flux divergence form, so this is my flux line integral. All right, so we're going to think a little bit about flux line integrals. Remember that when we did flux line integrals, our n vector was given by plus or minus t cross k. And when we did that cross product, we ended up with m dy minus n dx. So I need to think about plus or minus. On Green's theorem here, we have this counterclockwise circulation for our curve. So your unit tangent vector, if you just imagine that, where your unit tangent vector would be pointing, and think about t cross k, then the orientation of t cross k would be outward. So that's in the correct direction for n. So we're going to choose plus on the flux integral. So we're going to set that all up. So I started with my double integral that represented area at the very beginning. I rewrote that in terms of a flux integral. So I've just put in my m is 1 half x and my n is 1 half y here. And then noticing that there's a 1 half that I can factor out, I factored out the 1 half. The other important thing about this when I do this is to remember that in Green's theorem, we did have a counterclockwise circulation. So I'll need to ensure that I have a counterclockwise circulation around a curve. All right, so if you really love line integrals, you can use them to find the area of a region enclosed by a curve. It would be not my advice to do that in most cases. Most cases, a double integral is easier, but we're going to look at an example where it's actually easier to use the line integral. So here, we're going to find the area of a region inside just a generic ellipse. And so let's go ahead and sketch a little picture of the ellipse here. So the ellipse would have x-intercepts at a and negative a and y-intercepts at b and negative b, and I want to find the area enclosed by that. So this region is both x-simple and y-simple, so it would be fairly straightforward to set up a double integral. You would need to solve your equation for your curve in terms of x or y, depending on which one you put on the inner integral. So if you solve for y, you'd end up with y equals plus or minus square root of some expression involving constants and x squared. And so you could go ahead and set up that double integral. And the first integration would be fairly straightforward. It would be the second integration that would be difficult because you'd end up having to integrate these equations of this curve 
and generally integrating inside radicals can be difficult. So this is one where the double integral is doable but difficult, but the line integral is actually easier. So if I use Green's theorem to rewrite this, so we had one half and then we had a line integral with a counterclockwise orientation and we had x dy minus y dx. This is not a formula that I would advise you memorize for finding area. It is slick when it works, but it is probably not something you're going to come across that often that it is worth committing that to memory. And remember my derivation on that previous screen we looked at, there were quite a few steps to that. So it's probably not something that you want to have to go through unless you just really want to do that. So you could look this formula up if you needed it. All right, what I need next is a parameterization of my curve with a counterclockwise orientation. So at this point in the semester, parameterizing an ellipse should not be difficult for you. And that does give a counterclockwise orientation. So there's our parameterization that we're going to use for our line integral. And from there, it's just a matter of substituting in. I'll substitute in my x for x, my y for y, and my dy and my dx will come from differentials associated with my parameterization for my curve. All right, so let's go ahead and set up that line integral. And I get a lot of nice simplification in that integral. And so when I integrate that with respect to t, I'll have ab over 2 times t from 0 to 2 pi. And then I'll plug in my limits of integration. We get pi ab. So there's our area formula for an ellipse, so kind of a slick application of Green's theorem, but again, probably not something you're going to do that often, but there are a couple homework problems about this.